Hello! Welcome to my channel. There are several videos of the Indian Pipe, aka Ghost Flower, just informational videos all over YouTube, but I haven't found any of people actually testing it on themselves. Since this video is so long, I'm going to just put up some timestamps right here. Informational, me testing it, and some final thoughts on what I think and if it actually was helpful. Oh, and some things that I noticed that I think are pretty dope and useful to me. Let's get this started now. A little while ago, I found something very interesting deep in the woods and I wanna subject you all to it. So my family and I, we went out hiking and we were just getting some fresh air, touching some grass, preventing that wendigo psychosis from wreaking havoc on the neighborhood. But while we were out, I was taking a whole bunch of pictures of like mushrooms and stuff. My husband pointed out that there were some weird little white ones poking out of the ground. And of course, I'm stoked. I wanna see, I wanna get some pictures. When I went to look at these little white mushrooms, I knew immediately that they weren't mushrooms. You want to touch it? No. It's rubbery. But this is this is a plant. It's not a mushroom or a fungi. Those are dope. I didn't think I'd ever see these. But I was under the impression that they only grew in different countries. Uh, I had previously seen something on the subreddit interesting as fuck about the Indian pipe and it was just a picture and like a title but not really going too in depth and just thought wow I guess that is interesting. My feed is really lacking in gore today and kept scrolling. But finding it in the woods I was really excited. I grabbed some seed pods to try to grow it at home. Those are pods. Where? Those things sticking up. But it turns out that you cannot do that. Highly illegal in the laws of nature and the whole ecosystem. Turns out the Indian pipe, or as I'll be calling it, the ghost flower, represent. It has tons of names. Uh, ghost flower, corpse plant, bird's nest, Indian pipe, there's so many. So the ghost flower is a parasitic plant that gets its nutrients from another parasitic fungus that is in the dirt that gets its nutrients from the tree roots. So it's a parasite to a parasite. Epiparasite? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Epiparasite. P -p 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 -p. Parasitic plant. The ghost flower it takes that ghostly look where it's all white because it doesn't have any chlorophyll. It doesn't need to photosynthesize because it's just leaching its nutrients off of other things. It's one of an estimated 3,000 species of non-photosynthetic flowering plants. It's kind of special. It also doesn't branch out. Each individual flower comes from one single stem with little scale-like petals or leaves coming out of it. This is how it gets its scientific name, Monotropa uniflora. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. If not, just bully me in the comments. That's how I learn. The ghost flower is a perennial wildflower that is distributed from California, Alaska, Maine, Florida. So I grew up in Florida and I've never seen it, but if any friends from there are watching this video and you want to go fuck around and find out, go for it because uh, there's only so much I'm willing to test in this video. Though it does grow in the US, it doesn't grow in the Southwest, the Intermountain West, or the Rocky Mountain areas. So if you're looking for this plant, you're gonna have to do a bit of walking deep into the woods. And if the Fae catch you, they are gonna fuck you up. Godspeed. May your psychedelic journey be great. This plant can occasionally have tints of pink and red or blue in it. I found one with blue and I thought that was kind of nifty. I tried to zoom in on it. Um, but the, it is common for the plant to have speckles of black all throughout it. Once you pick this plant or it starts dying or gets damaged, it immediately starts turning black. And that's exactly what happened on my foraging adventure. As I was picking the flowers, the areas that were broken started turning black in the jar. The oils from the ghost flower stained my skin. And over the next two days, 
my fingertips were just black. I didn't think to get a picture or video because it just looked really disgusting. My nails looked like my favorite pastime is running out to the backyard and digging holes under the fence before they fill up again. As the ghost flower emerges from the ground, it has this little pipe shape where the flower is pointed downward, but as it matures or is pollinated, it will just align with the stem. And once it starts to bear fruit, it'll sprout these little seed pods out of it that open in slits. So that way when the wind blows, it releases the seeds with the wind. Ghost flowers bloom between summer and autumn. And believe it or not, they're a part of the blueberry family. I don't know why I included that, but I felt like it was necessary. It's weird. But for some reason, they're yeah, they're related to the blueberry family. They are also reported to taste like asparagus. They're edible, but it's not really recommended because they are mildly toxic and some flowers can be more potent than others. I'm actually kind of mad at myself because I did want to try that. I wanted to test a little nibble to see if they tasted like asparagus, but it totally slipped my mind while I was just chucking them in a jar. Now here's where we get to the part that really drives my obsession. Other than the ghostly appearance, those toxins. The ghost flower has heaps of medicinal uses. The Northern American Indians would pulverize the root to use it as an anti-convulsion. Some used an infusion of the root and the leaves to relieve pain. Others would chew on the flower as a remedy for toothaches. The ghost flower's root is said to be the most potent, but the plant as a whole is still very useful. I'm just gonna read off the list of things that it can do, its medicinal benefits. The ghost flower can be used as a tonic, sedative, nervine, and antispasmodic. It's reputed to cure fevers and prevent the return of some diseases as an antiperiodic. It can be employed in instances of restlessness, pains, nervous irritability, convulsions, epilepsy, choria, choria, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that one right, and other spasmodic affections followed with prompt success, even great applications to ulcers and inflammation. It has been used effectively in treating severe mental and emotional pain due to acute anxiety, PTSD, and other traumatic injury even reversing the effects of a bad psychedelic trip. One to three, one millimeter doses in numerous cases has given quick relief to these episodes within 15 to 30 minutes and has been used as a substitute for opium without any harmful side effects. That's if you're not overdosing yourself. The effects of the ghost flower are supposedly very calming and can make one sleepy. As for emotional uses, when it comes to anxiety, it kind of puts those worries on the shelf like you just stop caring for the time being. This plant is pretty dope. The amount of medicinal uses is just mind blowing. It's just one thing right after the other. When we found this plant, I didn't know any of this. I wasn't getting any connection on my phone, so I wasn't able to look anything about this plant up. I was just fascinated by the way it looked and it felt, so took some pictures and videos and then went about my hike. When I got home after that first hike, once I was able to look up all this information, all of its potential, this was like a once in a lifetime opportunity for me that I could not miss. I was just plagued by so many questions that need answers. There, There's tons of videos here on YouTube of people talking about this plant, harvesting it, making tinctures out of it. Is it really what it's hyped up to be? Can this plant actually help me with my anxiety? Will it even compare to the medications that I am prescribed for my anxiety? Can it even help me with like headaches that I get? I get almost daily headaches. Can it help me the same way an Excedrin would? I wanna find out. So I forced my family to take me back after pestering them non-stop about this plant for two days. I looked up how to make a tincture. We went back out there to the same hiking trail where we originally found it. I should not have a problem right. opening me, it. You want me to open it? 
I am a strong, independent woman. You gotta get the roots too, right? Yeah, but this is a small batch over here. I'm gonna go for the bigger ones and get the roots out of there. I don't want to be a dick and like take all of them. You want to leave some so that way more can grow. It's nice. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, you like that? I do. Yeah. Move your hands. Move your hands. Like out of the way or? Out of the way. Oh, all right, fine. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's a flower, right? Yeah. Not like a, a mushroom? Yeah, it's a plant. It's a parasitic plant. It's growing, uh, feasting off of the mycelium and the dirt. Oh, yeah, mycelium. Ooh, I guess that's what the roots look like. Ew. Break it up. Dude, it's like, it's all like. Yeah, some would just straight up be roots. Let me see. Turn it. It's the inside of it. It's all the same. I crushed and pressed the flowers down into the tincture to make sure that there weren't any like major air pockets or bubbles stuck in the plant. Just kind of wanted to get most of those bubbles out and then I did top off the vodka. The tincture has to sit, it has to ferment for six weeks before it's ready. I think I got quite a bit. Uh, this. Once it's ready, it can last up to three years and you only need one to 10 drops in a single day. Can't wait until it's ready. I'm going to be testing it gradually. I gotta figure out what my dosage would be. I've seen some things saying that it's a hallucinogenic and psychedelic plant, but I'm not, I wasn't really finding any information to back that up. If that's something that you're interested in, uh, I won't be doing that. I can't imagine that that would be a very fun high and I'm not, I'm not trying to fuck around and find out that much. I'm not trying to go to the shadow realms. I could just buy weed here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, informational stuff that I have found on this, this black goo that I will be putting in my mouth here in the next few seconds. So we started filtering it, we were draining it, I had my husband help me out, we decided to wear black gloves so our skin wouldn't be stained, and then I had him squeeze out every last drop that I could get. This is the technical difficulties crab, my footage froze as I was bottling the tincture. Please enjoy this crab. Kinda of tastes like asparagus. There you go. Yeah. One more. One. Yeah, one more. Oh. There you go. That one was like right on the tip of my tongue. Hello. It is now day two. I had to get some stuff from the store, and I decided to get this guy. This would help me accurately measure the milliliters. This right here is two milliliters. That's a lot, so no wonder why I wasn't feeling these little teeny tiny drops. So this is one milliliter, and if I squeeze it out, yeah, that is way more than the drops that I was taking yesterday. Here is the two millimeters right here. Two millimeters. I am going to be just taking it straight. I could barely taste it yesterday because the drops were so tiny, but um, these are some big drops. Oh god. 
I don't have anything to drink. You can taste the vodka and it tastes like super strong asparagus. I'm not like a, a food flavor critic. I can't, I don't know how to put it in words. It's, it's just disgusting. Hopefully I will feel something because that was a lot compared to what I took yesterday. Um, I'm just kind of tired. I don't know if I'm feeling slightly relaxed because I'm tired or kind of like a placebo thing. I'm expecting to feel something with how much I took, but I don't know. I'm just really sleepy. Hello, it is day three and it is almost three o'clock, so a good time to start up a panic attack. Normally if I drink like Red Bull or energy drinks too fast, I get really shaky, anxious, like my heart's pounding. So I'm just gonna chug this and in the next few minutes when I start getting anxious, I will come back. I don't feel too anxious, but I do feel it creeping up on me and my head is starting to hurt. I'm also freezing cold, so I throw on a sweater. So I made myself some tea this time because I'm not gonna take it straight. I'm drinking spicy hibiscus blossom. It's supposed to help elevate. God, you can see how shaky my hands are. Okay. <laughs> Positive energy uh, supports elevated mood and energy level. Nothing that has ever been like a tea or vitamin or over the counter anything has ever helped with my anxiety levels, so I don't think this is going to affect the Indian pipe if it does help me. I'm sorry, I'm not like well put together. I'm starting to breathe a little heavy. My, I'm jittery. It's going up my arms from my hands. I can feel it kicking in. Let's just dive into this now. Four milliliters right here. I'm just gonna uh, pour it into my tea. Nasty. It doesn't taste much different, but I can like Yeah, there's a there's a hint of it in there. But it, it's it's bearable. My fingers are starting to get like a little chihuahua where they're just shaky. And I can feel it coursing through my body. My whole body is starting to get like shaky. I made this tea in like perfect timing. I don't know what, because you're not eating dairy or cheese. Like what could mess up my stomach so bad? That's what's been confusing me. Spicy. Like, yes, it, it's I have been eating. I used to be so good with spice, but now it's like I have a little spicy and it's like I'm destroyed for the whole yeah. week. Is that really what it is? Yeah. I'll check back in in 30 minutes and if I need to up the dosage to another like two milliliters, I will I'll just keep trying that way. They're still a little bit shaky and jittery, but I can feel it creeping up my arms and like to my body. Now it just feels like it's like back to the beginning where it was just in my hands. So it's not, it didn't go away. It's still there, but not getting worse. It's at a halt. It's two milliliters. I'm gonna take this now. So that is a total of six milliliters today so far. I will come back in another 30 minutes to see if my funky head fog feeling has gone away and uh, if my anxiety has chilled out. Um, I don't know if anyone else gets this feeling, but when I take an Excedrin, right when it kicks in, I get kind of like this light-headed feeling and then it feels like my sinuses are just like cleared out and that's exactly what it felt like uh, about 30 minutes ago I felt like my sinuses were cleared out and I was a little light-headed kind of spacey feeling but uh, 
it's it's gone now and my head is hurting more so I'm gonna take two more milliliters it'll be a total of eight milliliters today I do feel tired I my anxiety did not like spike through the roof it did keep that at bay because otherwise I would have been like a shaky wreck but yeah, no, it stopped the trembling and shakiness that was coursing through my veins. Um, but as far as my headache, uh, no, it has not been helping. Here's two more milliliters. It's just such a disgusting taste. Uh, my head is no longer pounding. It didn't exactly go away, but it feels like it's on a halt. Again, uh, I am probably going to end up taking some ibuprofen because my head is still feeling weird. Uh, it's not hurting as much as it was when I took the extra two millimeters, milliliters. Like it's just kind of put on a halt. You scared the shit out of me. Hey. Uh, what's up, baby? <laughs> hey. You recording a video? What's going on, guys? Hey, it's your boy. I think tomorrow I will probably, if I do take more tomorrow, it will be at 8 milliliters, just straight. Probably mix it with tea, but I won't be taking like 2 milliliters every other hour. Hello, all right, um, today is day four, and I actually was not planning on making a video at all. I wasn't feeling anxious, my head wasn't hurting, I was feeling fine, and surprise, surprise, I do not wear 10 pounds of makeup around my eyes 24-7, so it's kind of awkward, but, um, uh, I'm kind of pissed off extremely pissed off and anxious now. Family shit outside of the household that I have like no control over and uh, want nothing to do with. So I'm pretty infuriated that I think I'm going to be put into a situation that I do not want to be in. I'm gonna start with eight milliliters since that is what I got up to yesterday, but it was over a time lapse like every Hour, I was taking like a tiny bit more so I'm just gonna start with eight milliliters and see if that helps to calm me down eight, eight milliliters hopefully when I come back I'll have my fingernails painted I really need to fix them I've been cleaning like all day Well, as disgusting as this is, it's not the worst thing I've tried. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get into making videos about this, but a couple years ago I was really into uh, lucid dreaming and trying to train myself to lucid dream like whenever I wanted to. So I was like trying several different teas, different methods of like waking up throughout the middle of the night, constantly writing down my dreams the second I would wake up. And I found out about this. It's like a it's a Mexican dream herb thing. I can't remember what it's called exactly. I'm probably gonna mispronounce it, but Salia Zacadichichi. That was disgusting. Um you're supposed to drink it. You're supposed to prepare it in a tea and drink a cup of it. And it's supposed to make you very tired. You go to sleep and then you start having like lucid dreams. If you look anything up about it, like it's most notorious for just tasting disgusting. I could not stomach one tiny measly sip. It was just so bad that any time I tried to take a sip, I was immediately dry heaving, about to throw up. It was really, really gross. So this is definitely not the worst thing I've ever had, but uh, it's right it's right next to it. It's nine o'clock, so next 30 minutes, hopefully I will be chilled out. 
because I feel like I'm getting shaky and I'm angry. I do feel a little more chilled out. I'm not angry anymore. Um, but I do feel like, like kind of stressed. I'm not sure if 10 milliliters would do the trick of making things go away so far. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if 10 milliliters will do the trick of making things go away. Um, but so far from what I've noticed, it has, it has been helping since yesterday where it just keeps things at bay. It doesn't completely make the headaches go away or it, the anxiety go away. It's still there, but on a lower level. And then I guess when this stuff wears off, then the, it kind of comes back. I don't know if I want to continue testing. I think I kind of found a level that does help. And I do think 10 milliliters would help majorly. But I, I don't know. I will have to see if I want to keep trying. The last day that I was testing was completely unexpected. I wasn't planning on testing that day. I didn't have any issues. So I didn't have any makeup on. If that bothers you, well, I'm very sorry. If you can't accept me at my worst, well, it doesn't get any better. It just gets worse. For overall, it did help. But for me, I do have a high tolerance to medications. I also take prescription medications. So for me, I never did go on to try and see if 10 milliliters would work. I do think it would help a lot more, but I totally forgot in my informational part that it is mentioned that it puts the feelings of anxiety on the shelf for the time being. And that is exactly what I was going through every time that I did take it and it was helping to calm my anxiety. It would help for a little bit and then my anxiety would just kind of come back later. It also did help soothe my headaches, not taking it away completely, but just put it on a lower level of pain. I didn't try using it for my insomnia, but it did make me sleepy. That was another thing. It really did make me sleepy and just more tired than anything else, really. Um, I think even though it did lower the anxiety, lower the headache pains, it was making me sleepy the more I was taking it and I, I just wanted to close my eyes and go to sleep. This right here is 10 milliliters and this is all I have left, which I didn't have much to begin with. I had about like up to here. So 10 milliliters every time that's a that's a lot that's not gonna last me very long so for me not really worth it if you are someone with a lower like i guess tolerance to things maybe it would be helpful for you especially if you're just kind of like living off the land that sounds pretty dope good for you but here is what i noticed since it had been in my system for about four days, it was helping me eat spicy food. And I mentioned this in the testing. I mentioned a clip where I was listening to like the H3 podcast and he's talking about how he can't eat spicy food anymore and he's wondering if it's because he's older and then he feels like he's ruined for the rest of the week if he does eat spicy food. And me, 90% of my diet is spicy. I am just pouring hot sauce into like every bowl of food I eat. But like the past couple of months, I have not been able to touch spicy food. I have to like just suffer through my thirst for hellfire. Every, every time I try to eat my most favorite food, hot chips, just hot chips, I get really bloated and I have like these really bad stomach pains and I don't, I, I should probably see a doctor, honestly. I tried, I tried to see a doctor about the weird stomach thing that's been happening to me lately, but I was 10 minutes late and I wanted coffee. So when I got to the doctor's office, they were just 
told me to get the fuck out of their face and I had to leave. So I didn't see a doctor and I, I should probably reschedule that. But on my series of uh, testing this stuff, I noticed on the fourth day, well, I didn't really notice. I just kind of uh, decided I would suffer that day. I really wanted hot chips and I was just like, whatever, the pain's gonna be worth it the next day. Downed a bag of hot chips and the next day I, I wasn't experiencing any of that. I wasn't bloated, I wasn't having stomach cramps and then it hit me. This stuff is the bomb. I can use this before I eat spicy food. So after that next day, when I realized I wasn't in pain and suffering, I went ahead and took four more milliliters. I wasn't recording because I wasn't testing anymore. I was just using what I had to protect myself. So I took four milliliters uh, down some more chips and then I had a bowl of like, oh, jazzy jambalaya. Chunky soup, oh, it's so good. I doused that shit with ghost chili hot sauce and I ate that whole bowl. And then I took a little bit more after I eat. So I took some before and after I ate. And again, nothing. If you're living off the land and you wanna be able to coat your stomach before you crawl back to Chipotle, there you go, baby. No Chipotle stains in those underwear. That was a very lovely discovery. So I will continue taking this for sure, knowing that I can eat spicy food now again without any re repercussions. Uh, who dare? Also, I, in my clip where I was uh, topping off my tincture, making sure there were no bubbles in there, there was a scene of me preserving a single flower into a bottle of rubbing alcohol. I wanted to keep a flower, and that bottle, uh, shortly after all of the rubbing alcohol turned to black, the flower turned solid black. But now, I have found a jar for it. So this is it. So solid black, you can't really see the details in it. Put the inside of the flower and all that. Put in some fresh rubbing alcohol. I might have to change it one more time, I don't know. It looks like it's getting slightly cloudy, but I don't think it's gonna turn all black. I think it was in the original rubbing alcohol long enough to stay preserved. That is, that is all that I wanted to say. This is a very long video, so if you skipped ahead, I don't blame you. But if you did watch all the way through, thank you very much. I might be able to buy like half a packet of ramen noodles. I'm just kidding. I don't get paid for any of this. I just do it for fun. It was fun doing the research and scripting on the first half, the informational half. I did not script the testing and that was hard for me to do. I did not enjoy getting in front of a camera while feeling anxious, having no makeup on and feeling like crap. That was, that was not fun and I do not want to do that ever again. But uh, that, it, it's there so other people know what it's like how it affected me, maybe you get an idea of how it might affect you. Everybody's different though, so just be cautious, be careful. So definitely find your dosage first, test it small amounts and work your way up because the flowers can be more potent than other ones. And don't, don't be an asshole while picking the plants, you know, just pick what you need and leave some to grow because it is a very rare plant you want it to come back each year. Don't don't screw up the whole ecosystem. All right. Peace. Oh, um, I hope you like my video. I worked really hard on it, and uh, thanks for watching.